God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Rise up, Lord, and come to my aid. O Lord, plead my cause against my foes. Fight those who fight me. Take up your buckler and shield. Arise to help me. O Lord, say to my soul, I am your salvation. But my soul shall be joyful in the Lord and rejoice in his salvation. My whole being will say, Lord, who is like you, who rescued the weak from the strong and the poor from the oppressor? Lying witnesses arise and accuse me unjustly. They repay me evil for good. My soul is forlorn. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Rise up, Lord, and, and come, come to my aid. aid. All-powerful Lord, stand by me and defend me. When they were sick, I went into mourning, afflicted with fasting. My prayer was ever on my lips, as for a brother, a friend. I went as though mourning a mother, bowed down with grief. Now that I am in trouble, they gather, they gather and mock me. They take me by surprise and strike me and tear me to pieces. They provoke me with mockery on mockery and gnash their teeth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All-powerful Lord, stand by me and defend me. My tongue will speak of your goodness all the day long. O Lord, how long will you look on? Come to my rescue. Save my life from these raging beasts, my soul from these lions. I will thank you in the great assembly. Amid the throng I will praise you. Do not let my lying foes rejoice over me. Do not let those who hate me unjustly wink eyes at each other. O Lord, you have seen. Do not be silent. Do not stand afar off. Awake, stir to my defense, to my cause, O God. Let there be joy for those who love my cause. Let them say without end, Great is the Lord who delights in the peace of his servant. Then my tongue shall speak of your justice all day long of your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My tongue will speak of your goodness all the day long. My son, take my words to heart. Do as I say, and you will live. From the book of the prophet Ezekiel. On the tenth day of the month, beginning the twenty-fifth year of our exile, fourteen years after the city was taken, that very day the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me in divine visions to the land of Israel, where he set me down on a very high mountain. On it there seemed to be a city being built before me. When he had brought me there, all at once I saw a man whose appearance was that of bronze. He was standing in the gate, holding a linen cord and a measuring rod. The man said to me, Son of man, look carefully and listen intently, and pay strict attention to all that I will show you, for you have been brought here so that I might show it to you. Tell the house of Israel all that you see. 
Then he led me to the gate which faces the east, and there I saw the glory of the God of Israel coming from the east. I heard a sound like the roaring of many waters, and the earth shone with his glory. The vision was like that which I had seen when he came to destroy the city, and like that which I had seen by the river Kibar. I fell prone as the glory of the Lord entered the temple by way of the gate which faces the east. But spirit lifted me up and brought me to the inner court. And I saw that the temple was filled with the glory of the Lord. Then I heard someone speaking to me from the temple while the man stood beside me. The voice said to me, Son of man, this is where my throne shall be. This is where I will set the soles of my feet. Here I will dwell among the Israelites forever. Never again shall they and their kings profane my holy name with their harlotries and with the corpses of their kings, their high places. When they placed their threshold against my threshold and their doorpost next to mine, so that only a wall was between us, they profaned my holy name by their abominable deeds. Therefore I consumed them in my wrath. From now on, they shall put far from me their harlotry and the corpses of their kings, and I will dwell in their midst forever. As for you, son of man, describe the temple to the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their sins, both its measurements and its design. And if they are ashamed of all they have done, make known to them the form and design of the temple, its exits and entrances, all its statutes and laws. Write these down for them to see, that they may carefully observe all its laws and statutes. This is the law of the temple. Its whole surrounding area on the mountaintop shall be most sacred. Say to that rebellious house, the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, enough of all these abominations of yours, O house of Israel. You have admitted foreigners, uncircumcised both in heart and flesh, to my sanctuary to profane it when you offered me food, fat, and blood. Thus you have broken my covenant by all your abominations. Instead of caring for the service of my temple, you have appointed such as these to serve me in my sanctuary in your stead. Thus says the Lord God, no foreigners, uncircumcised in heart and in flesh, shall ever enter my sanctuary, none of the foreigners who live among the Israelites. The glory of the Lord entered the temple by the east gate, and the house of God was filled with his splendor. His parents took the child Jesus into the temple. And the house of God was filled with his splendor. From the decree on the life and ministry of priests of the Second Vatican Council. Priests are made in the likeness of Christ the priest by the sacrament of orders, so that they may, in collaboration with their bishops, work for the building up and care of the church, which is the whole body of Christ, acting as ministers of him who is the head. Like all other Christians, they have received the sacrament of baptism, the symbol and gift of such a calling, and such grace that even in human weakness they can and must seek for perfection 
according to the exhortation of Christ. Be you therefore perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Priests are bound, however, to acquire that perfection in special fashion. They have been consecrated by God in a new manner at their ordination and made living instruments of Christ the eternal priest, that they may be able to carry on in time his marvelous work whereby the entire family of man is again made whole by power from above. Since, therefore, every priest in his own fashion acts in place of Christ himself, he is enriched by special grace, so that, as he serves the flock committed to him and the entire people of God, he may the better grow in the grace of him whose tasks he performs, because to the weakness of our flesh there is brought the holiness of him who for us was made a high priest, holy, guiltless, undefiled, not reckoned among us sinners. Christ, whom the Father sanctified, consecrated, and sent into the world, gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and cleanse for himself an acceptable people, pursuing good works, and thus through suffering entered into his glory. In like fashion, priests consecrated by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and sent by Christ must mortify the works of the flesh in themselves and give themselves entirely to the service of men. It is in this way that they can go forward in that holiness with which Christ endows them to perfect man. Hence, those who exercise the ministry of the Spirit and of justice will be confirmed in the life of the Spirit so long as they are open to the Spirit of Christ, who gives them life and direction. By the sacred actions which are theirs daily, as well as by their entire ministry which they share with the bishop and their fellow priests, they are directed to perfection in their lives. Holiness does much for priests in carrying on a fruitful ministry. Although divine grace could use unworthy ministers to effect the work of salvation, Yet for the most part, God chooses to show forth his wonders, those who are more open to the power and direction of the Holy Spirit, and who can, by reason of their close union with Christ and their holiness of life, say with St. Paul, and yet I am alive, or rather not I, it is Christ that lives in me. I have longed to give you the gospel, and more than that, to give you my very life. You have become very dear to me. My little children, I am like a mother giving birth to you until Christ is formed in you. You have become very dear to me. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who by a singular grace gave the priest St. Pius a share in the cross of your Son, and by means of his ministry renewed the wonders of your mercy, grant that through his intercession we may be united constantly to the sufferings of Christ and so brought happily to the glory of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks. <laughs> 